I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I'm Paul Kenny of Life Tabernacle of Canton, Missouri. In serving there since 1982, in October of last year, we installed Philip Darnell to be the lead pastor of our church. I'm still involved as the bishop of our local congregation, and God is blessing touching lives, ministering to souls. We are on Highway 16, uh, just one half mile west of Pizza Hut uh, at Canton, Missouri. Um, just a little over a year ago, we started our second campus in Cahoka, Missouri, and a couple of months ago, we started a third campus in LaBelle. Praise God. We're believing for the Lord to touch lives and minister to people who need Jesus Christ. We are a vibrant church connecting ordinary people to a living God. We want to be His people, connecting people to Him. It's His plan and our purpose, connecting people to Jesus. And so I want to preach to you today that God specializes in people. Reading in the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 1, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. He sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for Jesus was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. I would to God today that more people would receive Jesus joyfully. So-called Christians of this generation actually speak against church, but Jesus himself created and designed the church. In fact, Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church. All that more would come to church and really and truly find Jesus for their life. And so back to the scripture, when they, all the people around Zacchaeus saw it, then they murmured saying that Jesus was gone to be the guest of with a man who was a sinner. Zacchaeus stood, said to the Lord. God spoke to the heart of Zacchaeus, and his response was, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. What a great change came into the life of Zacchaeus because he invited Jesus into his house. And what a change for you and a change for me if we will invite Jesus into our life and into our house and our home. Let me tell you that you can tell when there's been a real conversion in someone's life because it will change them inside out. Jesus said, to Zacchaeus, this day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. I like verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Again, I'm preaching to you today that God specializes in people. Christianity refers to the gospel as the good news. And I come here today with good news for you. Out of curiosity, I ran a reference on good news 
in the Bible. And this is a scripture that I found in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 25. As cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. The truth is, we do have good news from a far country. It was good news that God brought himself to us, and he brought himself. God was manifest in the flesh. He came to this earth with a purpose and with a message. It was as fresh, cold water. So it was fresh, cold water, my friend, to a dry and thirsty soul. We read in the book of John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We read in that same chapter in verse 11, Jesus said, or it says, he came to his own, and his own received him not. He came to the Jews, and they did not receive him. But verse 12 says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I am so thankful today that the door was open to us. Us who are Gentiles, that's us today. We receive him. We have received him. There are those who will receive him, and he gives us power to become a child of God. God brought to this earth a message of help and a message of hope. It's a message of salvation and redemption for mankind. You see, God loves people. From the very beginning, God specialized in people. After all of his other creation, we look in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The next verse, verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. I'm sorry to disappoint you today, but God didn't say that about any animal. He only said that about man. Now, I'm not against animals. I'm glad for them. But God created mankind in his image, and God specializes in people. In verse 28, God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, from the very beginning, God was all about people. He loved them. He chastened them. He comforted them. God helped them. He saved them. He delivered them. In fact, my friend, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, the very first man, the very first woman, and the very first sin, God planned Calvary. For Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Then when the whole world was wicked and only Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, God provided a plan for the saving of Noah and his family. God provided a plan for the saving of people, for the saving of mankind. And when the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat, the Bible says that God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply 
and replenish the earth. The next main character in the Word of God, God called Abraham to be the father of a great nation. And when Abraham lied about his wife, I'm going to tell you that the wonderful God Almighty, he extended mercy, he extended grace, and kept his promises to Abraham. We read in James chapter 2 and verse 23, the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. I'm thankful for that today. I have a desire in my heart that I want to be a friend of God. It was a man, it was Abraham that the word called a friend of God. Let's be that today, a friend of God. And then we look at the third generation from Abraham, and it was Jacob, his grandson, Abraham's grandson, a deceiver, a supplanter. But God saw in something in, Abraham, in Jacob that he loved, and God blessed him. One night, Jacob had an experience with God that changed him forever. He wrestled all night with an angel of the Lord. The result of that was he was no longer a Jacob, but he became an Israel, a prince having power with God. Oh, I'm thankful today that we can have a mighty experience with God that changes us from the inside out, that we can be a new creature in Christ Jesus, delivered from the old life, delivered from the sin, and a new person, a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm thankful for that opportunity today. I see that it still happens as God reaches into the hearts and the lives with peop of people and creates something new within them. Joseph, the 11th son of Jacob, was sold by his brothers into slavery. Now, folks, it may seem like for you and me that we're facing the worst of situations, that were in the darkest of the valleys. And every day for Joseph that went by, God was with Joseph and watching over him. When he was a servant to Potiphar, when he was sold by his brothers, while he was a slave to Potiphar, he was blessed even when he was thrown into prison. Joseph was blessed by God and eventually became a great leader in Egypt, God took his terrible situation and miraculously turned it into salvation for his people. Can I tell you today that God will take your situation? He'll turn it into a miracle to save your loved ones and to save your families. Just last week, we baptized a young lady that today is 30 days clean from meth and all addictive drugs. Praise God. She came, was delivered, and God baptized her with his love. We water baptized her in the holy and precious name of Jesus. The beautiful thing was that she had family that attended the service to see the daughter baptized. The mother is weeping tears and thanking us for helping to see the difference and the change in her daughter's life. The truth is, we know it wasn't us. It was simply God because God specializes in people. Here's a fact today that God is our Savior. He came to save and to seek that which was lost. I want you to listen to these verses from the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 11. Isaiah said, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Friend, we need to understand He is our Deliverer. He is our Savior. He's the only wise God. In Hosea chapter 13 verse 4, He said, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt 
know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. So you see, my friend, Jehovah God of the Old Testament is the only Savior. And then this is what we find in the New Testament in Luke chapter 2 and verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then in 1 Timothy 4 and 10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. I want to tell you, my friend, God Almighty, the creator of mankind, the creator of this world is our Savior and our deliverer today. He is the only wise God. The Savior of the Old Testament is the Savior of the New Testament. And it makes no difference, my friend, if we're talking about Jehovah God of the Old Testament or Jesus the Christ of the New Testament. He is our God. He is our Savior. He is the only wise God, the one and only God. You know, I say this often when we are baptizing people, and uh, I pray that God will give you some revelation in this. Uh, we water baptize in the precious and the holy name of Jesus. I tell folks, I'm not going to baptize you in the name of Pastor Kenny, in the name of Paul Kenny, because there's no power in that name. And we're not going to baptize you in the name of any president of the United States of America, the current or any past president, because there's no power in those names. But we're going to baptize you in the name of the one who died on the cross for your sins. We're going to baptize you in the name of the one who shed his life's blood as he hung on an old rugged cross. For you see, my friend, God specializes in people. I want to tell you that this God I'm preaching today preaching about today. He is all about people. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to find lost people and save them. There's a fairly new family that's coming to our church, and they said, our granddaughter, she's not been welcome at other churches. She has some physical disabilities. I want to tell you that everybody is welcome in the house of God. Jesus is seeking and searching and looking today for people that are hungry for him. Can I tell you that every miracle that God performed, everything that God planned and did was for the benefit of people. Pardon me this morning, but it's greater than saving the spotted owl or saving the trees. Jesus came to seek and to save the people that were lost. It wasn't always the multitude that got God's attention. There were many, many times that God took time for the individual just like he did Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus who was not worthy. Zacchaeus who was not deserving. God went to his house. You see, in an example in the Old Testament, Abraham and Sarah were promised a child. They didn't believe. They couldn't wait. And Sarah finally sent her maid, Hagar, in to Abraham. And a baby was born to that union, and they named him Ishmael. Was Ishmael the promised child for Abraham? No, my friend, he was not. And this child soon became an unwanted child. Let me tell every child or grown up who feels that they are unwanted, that God specializes in you. He specializes in people, and Jesus wants you. Twice, Hagar 
was run off by Sarah. Once when she was pregnant with the baby, and once when Ishmael was about 14 years old. Can I tell you, though, that God both times intervened for the woman who was out of place and for her child who really should never have been born. God was all about people. Amen. He's all about you. Friend, here's the sad part, and probably the only negative part in this message. Message. There are too many churches and too many so-called Christians that care only about themselves. But God's business is people reaching to, ministering to, and touching their lives. For Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. It's his plan today. It's his purpose today. And I pray, God, help me, Jesus, help me, help the church today to be about your business and doing your will and your plan. When it was Daniel in the Old Testament against the lion's den, God turned the ferocious wild animals into house cats. And God saved Daniel. There was something about the city of Nineveh, a wicked city, that got the attention of God. God called a preacher to go preach to them. And Jonah ran the opposite direction. His running away from God stirred something up in the Lord. And God sent a storm. Jonah saw God in the storm. He told the captain of the ship, that he was the problem, and to throw him overboard. So the next thing we find, Jonah's in the water, being swallowed by a specially prepared fish sent by God. I can tell you today that if you won't pray, God may send you a prayer room. He may create a specially created prayer room just for you, just like he did for Jonah. God made Jonah his own private prayer room. I want to assure you, God can. He will create a prayer room for you. He can give you a reason to pray and to call on him, for he loves you and wants to save you. God will do anything he can to get your attention so that he can speak to your heart. I encourage you today say yes to Jesus say yes to Jesus Jonah came out of that prayer meeting he came out of the belly of the whale ready to preach he conducted the greatest revival that he'd ever preached in the city of Nineveh and the Bible lets us know that the whole city was saved and then we go back to Luke chapter 19 Jonah or Jesus entered into the city of Jericho he saw Zacchaeus up in the sycamore tree and invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. And it was there that a great miracle took place in that man's life. Could I say that Jesus is inviting himself into your life? He has a miracle planned for you. He has a situation of blessing that's planned for you. I can tell you about the young man from our church that is just a little over 80 days free from meth and marijuana and alcohol and every addictive substance. It's the Lord that has set him free. He went down to an old-fashioned altar and he knelt before the Lord and poured his life and heart out before God. It was a beautiful thing to see him get up from his knees and tell the pastor of our church, the lead pastor, to tell him, I'm done with the old life. I'm done with the sin. I'm done with the drugs. I've got to be right with God. And since that day, he's been clean. God has given open doors, provided an apartment. God has provided a job. I went into the grocery store today and saw him working. Thanks be to a holy and a living God that specializes in people, that specializes in those that we would turn our noses down upon. 
But God doesn't do it that way. He reaches. He loves. Now, I'm going to tell you that God's looking for believers who will be an instrument in the hand of God. I'm telling you today that God's looking for men and women, even boys and girls, who will say yes to the Lord and be an instrument in the hand of God so God can use you to speak to somebody's life. I'm asking you today, would you say yes to Jesus? Would you say yes to the Lord? He specializes in people. God specializes in those who are broken and hurting and in need because he has the answer for your life. I can tell you that Jesus will never cheat on you. He will never lie about you. He will never gossip about you. He will never refuse you or turn you aside. He's inviting himself into your heart, into your home, and into your life. For him to come into your life, for Jesus to be a part of you, you've got to open yourself to the Lord. And when you do, you will find that God cares for you like no one else does. For God specializes in people. I pray God help me to be an agent of him, of an agent of the Lord that helps to connect other people to Jesus. I pray that there will be some of you today that will say, yes, Lord, I want to be about your business. You see, Jesus, at the age of 12 years old, when his parents could not find him, when his mother was looking for him, he was speaking to those in the temple. They were amazed and did not understand how this 12-year-old child could understand the things of God like he did. And he said to his mother said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? And I want to say it's time for us to be about our father's business. It's time for us to understand that he specializes in people and we also ought to do the same. And I invite you today to find a place to pray and come to Jesus. Give yourself to him. Open your heart to the Lord. Give your life to Jesus. Let your life be spent for his will and his plan. Let yourself be given to him so that you can be the instrument in the hand of God, reaching to others and touching other lives. I pray that you will be part of those that are connecting people to a living God, that you will love people just like Jesus does. I pray that you will understand and have the revelation this day that God specializes in people. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you, and he wants to specialize in you. Praise God. Let's pray right now, believing the Lord. Jesus I pray that you would open hearts, open lives, and open minds. Lord, I pray that you would release those who are bound by sin. Release them from their sin and set them free. Give them an open door today to come to you, to find a church, Lord, that believes and reaches and serves. God, I pray that, you would that we would understand that you've come to this generation today to specialize in people. Help us to be your hands, to be your voice, to specialize in people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.